Today on Northern Revolutions, I'm doing something I've wanted to do for a while. I'm starting my own contest. So stay tuned. <laughs> community it's Robert with blocks sonic wafers and I'm here to, to put together a little video for a contest for Rob up at Northern Revolutions and he wants us to show three albums uh, it is very meaningful in our musical exploration and he also wants us to give a shout out to uh, another channel. Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to three channels. These fellows uh, are my most active followers, viewers. Uh, and that would be Mike at T-Cat's Deep Vinyl Tracks. He always makes some great comments about my videos uh, Dan at Stoner's Stash Box and the old goat uh, three great channels that you really ought to check out I uh, will try to remember to put a link down below they would appreciate it, and I would appreciate it. So let's get started. My first selection is a dual selection. I got to go with these two Beatle albums, the red and the blue. As you can see, there's definitely some age on my covers. They came with the original inserts. These are OG copies of the American release. Back at that time, I did not know that there was a, a difference between the American and UK release. But these not only uh, encompass their entire career, their music uh, has encompassed my life in many ways. Uh, my sister was uh, about a year and a half older than I was, and she actually discovered the Beatles before me. But it was a ritual at our house on Sunday evenings to... Uh, sit up TV trays in front of the television. We always had uh, soup and sandwiches on Sunday night. There was a lineup on the television we never missed and Ed Sullivan was part of that. So I followed my sister in her excitement to be sitting in front of the television when the Beatles made their first appearance on Ed Sullivan in 1964. And that was just the beginning. Uh, their music would come out of her room, you know, which was right across the hall from me. Uh, and uh, I basically followed my sister's musical taste in that regard and began learning about the Beatles on my own. So fast forward uh, quite a few years into my teens, uh, and I remember one year my father asked what I wanted for Christmas. And I had uh, I was heavily into music and records by then and, and I handed him a list of records. I, don't, I can't even remember how many were on the list. But on Christmas morning, I got a box and opened it up. 15 albums, all of that had been on my list. One of the greatest Christmases ever. And these were two of them. These are the actual copies. Uh, 
So these hold sentimental value as even though they don't look like they were well cared for. This was way before I knew anything about plastic covers or uh, fancy inners and, and all of that stuff. But I played these recently and as far as the vinyl goes, got the lyrics on the inner sleeves and my understanding this is the first time that was ever done. Uh, these play perfectly. I gave them a little bath and gave them a spin and uh, They're great So both my sister and my father are no longer with us uh, I miss them greatly uh, My sister was one of the biggest Paul McCartney fans you'd ever meet and because of her love for the Beatles that was pretty much what she got from me on Christmas and birthdays and such was always special releases and collectible Beatles items and uh, things of that nature. So the Beatles have been with me my, my whole life and still are to this day. Number two. I'm gonna go with T for the Tillerman. Came out in 1970. Me and a bunch of friends used to uh, stroll downtown, especially on the weekends, and <clears throat> there was a little cafe called the East End Cafe that we liked to frequent when we had a little money in our pockets. Uh, and we would sit in the East End Cafe and eat burgers and, and play games and, and play the jukebox. And I discovered a song, and I don't even remember how, but I found a song on the jukebox called Wild World by a band called The Gentries. And I used to play the heck out of that tune on that jukebox by The Gentries. And I wish I could remember how that I, I found out that Cat Stevens was actually the one who wrote that song, which made me pursue his version and that is how I wound up with not this mobile fidelity version, but, but the original pressing of, of T for the Tillerman. And that inspired me to attempt to learn the guitar, which I have been attempting to do since then, uh, many years ago. I'm still not very good at it. I'm a I'm a living room guitar legend, but I don't dare play out anywhere. Uh, I've always appreciated, especially this album and Teaser and the Firecat for the production, Paul Samuel Smith. Uh, I love the use of what they called the Cat Stevens Choir, uh, really well orchestrated the percussion that they use, uh, the acoustic instruments are recorded beautifully. This one is when Cat was primarily on acoustic guitar. You know, a few albums later, he kind of drifted more towards the keyboard and, and synthesizers. Uh, but these two are my favorites, this and Teaser and Fire Cat. But this holds a lot of great memories for me to this day. Uh, I keep buying the new deluxe versions of it and probably will continue to. So this is my second choice here. My third choice is going to be Elvis. That's the way it was. And not necessarily this album, but like the Beatles, Elvis was a large part of my growing up, uh, mostly because of my brother. My brother was the biggest Elvis pet fan in the family, and he was crazy about Elvis. And of course, I heard Elvis pouring out of his room. And uh, in 1976, Elvis came to town. Uh, 
I got tickets and took my brother. We got to go see Elvis at Freedom Hall. The one in Johnson City, Tennessee, not the one in Kentucky. Uh, and Elvis stayed here in Bristol while the concert was over in Johnson City. So it's about a about a 19 mile drive for them. Uh, and he stayed in the Holiday Inn, which had a, a suite upstairs. He stayed in the suite and, and they covered up the windows with tin foil. But I mean, people were gathered outside in the parking lot when they arrived and when they left to go to the show and when they got back from the show. Uh, it was a really big deal. Somebody sold that tin foil on the windows in, in one inch squares. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But I'll always remember, and I feel kind of bad about this, uh, Elvis bought me a stereo for my car, which at the time was a 1965 Volkswagen Beetle. I bought 10 tickets to that show, and my poor little sister, the one that got me involved in the Beatles, not, not little as in younger than me, uh, She's the one who went down to Freedom Hall and stood in line to get these 10 tickets that I purchased, which I scalped except for the two me and my brother used. And I used that money to put a stereo in my vehicle. So thank you, Elvis. Uh, so he's always been a big part of the family. I, I don't have as many of his, his albums. I've got a nice box set, which will be shown in my box set videos. Uh, and I've got this album. My nephew got the majority of my brother's Elvis albums. So, but there's Elvis. That's another big part of my life and story. My brother is also no longer with us. That is three. I'm going to throw in a bonus. Also in 1970, I was 15. I was starting in my very first job, legally. Uh, I was uh, an usher at the Paramount Theater here in town, which was a big movie palace. Uh, very beautiful theater that was dormant for many years and almost got torn down, but they finally redid it, revitalized it, and it's still a great theater today. But back then, they just showed movies. And uh, we had a cool manager who uh, put music over the house sound system. And it was always good music. And, and so I would be at work and I would hear the same album play over and over and over again between flicks and, and things on my shift. And when this album came out, Tumbleweed Connection. That's how I got to know this record. At work. It played over and over and over again. It was released in 1970 in the UK. Actually came out in 1971 here in the US. And of course it's not the only album that I got to know on that job. It's Ballad of a Well-Known Gun. Uh, this is one of my very favorite Elton albums, and I thought it was really uh, bold to come out with their second album in the States as a Western. And that's basically what Tumbleweed Connection is, is a Western. But it's got great musicianship, uh, great use of, of strings and orchestra, Paul Buckmeister was responsible for those string arrangements back in the early days. Uh, and they really made a difference in the way strings were used in, in rock and roll music in those days. Uh, 
This is the uh, 5.1 SAC DU version of, of tumbleweed connection. I do have the OG vinyl, but it hadn't made it over from my secret stash as of yet. This has a little bit of bonus material. Uh, it's got uh, Into the Old Man's Shoes and the original version of Madman Across the Water with Mick Ronson, which is really cool in uh, 5.1 because Mick's guitar parts go back and forth. Uh, so anyway, that's a bonus. Tumbleweed Connection. I was an usher at the movie theater. I was, I was dating my high school sweetheart who also worked there. A lot of great memories from that place. I started out making 55 cents an hour. <clears throat> uh, I got promoted to doorman. I was the guy that stands at the door and takes your tickets as you come in. And that bumped me up to 65 cents an hour. Woohoo! A lot of great memories from those days. So there's a little bit about me uh, and a, a little bit about my musical taste. And it's a great contest. Northern Exposures, uh, Rob has a great channel. If you not watched it, you ought to check it out. Uh, he has really cool graphics coming into the show, which, which I've never gotten around to really, and eventually I will. Uh, but that's it. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I will see you on the next video.